So the machine I'm going to talk about today is the Mills Golf Ball Bender. This machine was produced by Mills from about 1937 through about 1941, so they made them for about four years. There were a couple other companies that also made golf ball benders. Jennings started the fad back in around 1934 with their uh, Sportsman machine. It was a countertop machine, all aluminum front. Um, in 1937, they replaced it with a uh, new improved Sportsman, which was all wood, probably made to compete with the Mills console machines. And then uh, Superior also made a golf ball machine, probably around the same, same time frame as Mills, late 30s through the early 40s. Um, like the name implies, it's a golf ball machine, so when you win, you win golf balls. You don't win coins. So these would be typically in uh, pro shops at golf courses and, uh, and all that. Um, I just picked up this machine a week ago. I actually bought it from a golf pro in Dallas. It, uh, he bought it in 1968, so he owned it for about 50 years. And uh, when they first contacted me, it was in January of two, 2015, so it was over two years ago. Um, you know, they just sent me some rough pictures. They said they weren't ready to sell. They just wanted some information. So I provided them the information that they wanted. And then they, uh, they contacted me two and a half years later, said they were ready to sell. Um, did have a lot of great pictures of the machine, especially at the back. So uh, I was just hoping that the uh, electromechanical portions of it were not uh, destroyed by battery corrosion because a lot of times with these machines that were made in the 30s, 40s, and 50s that ran on batteries, batteries uh, leak and uh, it seems like these guys always put the batteries above the electrical components. And if you get acid that leaks down on them, it can really uh, wreak havoc. Um, but based on the condition of the front of the machine and then the rough pictures I had of the back, plus they said they've had it since the mid or late 60s and it worked back then, I just hope that the, uh, the batteries were not corroded because you know, when I looked at the pictures from the bottom of the machine, it was uh, pretty obvious that the machine had not been converted to 110. Um, a lot of these machines have been converted to 110 to get away from the battery issues. I don't know if that is dealers and collectors that are doing it or if operators actually did that back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, this machine still runs on batteries. Um, when I got to Dallas, it turns out they had misplaced the key to open up the back of the machine. So I was kind of buying it sight unseen as far as the mechanism goes. But they did have the keys to the lower half so I could kind of look at the hopper control unit for the, uh, the golf balls. And I didn't see any indications of uh, corrosion. So I rolled the dice hoping that I would be in for any oh my god moments when I got it home. Fortunately, um, there was no issues at all with battery leakage. It still had the batteries from the 60s. It had two of these EverReady Lantern batteries that were hooked in series. And amazingly, they were not uh, leaking at all. So anyway, um, I guess that's enough about this machine. Uh, let's go ahead and play it a few times. We'll see if we can hit a winner, win a golf ball. And then after that, I will uh, pull out the hopper control unit and go into uh, great detail on how that works. So if you end up with one of these machines and uh, it doesn't work, maybe it'll help you try to figure out uh, how to get it going. So let's uh, put in some quarters and see what happens. Oh, one other thing. Uh, when I first saw the pictures of it, I thought this machine had been restored. But once I looked at it and got it home, I think it's just a very nice, all original machine. And in the machine were some Mills golf ball vendor tokens. And I didn't even know they made tokens for the, the golf ball machine, but these tokens have the exact same image stamped into them as this golfer right here. So I suspect these were used at the uh, pro shops where 
maybe they had contests and they gave away these tokens for people to try to win golf balls or maybe they were set up to not take reporters but to use the tokens kind of a dodge around the law but these were inside the mechanism and it just kind of also confirms to me that this is not been restored it's all original it the back which I'll turn around after we played a few times the back door the bottom back door actually has two two mills keys or two mills locks one to open the entire back door and one to just open up a little door to add more golf balls all of the golf ball machines I've seen at auctions the back door does not have two compartments or two slots so I think the, the back door has been replaced or maybe they quit doing that in later production this uh, the serial number on this machine I don't know it off the top of my head I'll show the bottom of the screen is fairly early if you look at the uh, coin op registry site coinopregistry.com which tracks serial numbers of antique slot machines um, it's relatively early so I think this machine was probably 1937 or 1938 but they didn't stamp the, uh, the date of manufacture on the machine so just based on the serial number I think this is one of the first machines or early in the production run so let's go ahead and uh, put some quarters and try and win some golf balls How's that for luck? First pull, we get two cherries. And here's our golf ball. If you notice, it took a while for the golf ball to come out because at the very bottom of the machine, there's a long track that the golf balls have to go around uh, before they come out the hole. And the reason for that is if you hit a big winner of 20 golf balls, the machine's going to dispense all 20 golf balls. Well, those golf balls then will reside in the track until you pull them out one at a time. If they didn't do that, then they would they just have the golf balls would just you know fall out on the floor, which would be a mess and uh, be a tripping hazard and all that. So they were they were thinking when they made this thing to uh, have the machine actually store the golf balls in, a, in an area inside the machine, and then as you pull them out of the tray, they would then come out. Um, so anyway, that's a uh, we get a winner on the first pull. What are the odds of that? Uh, let's turn the machine around. I'll show you the back of it, show you those two uh, door panels in the back door, and then we'll uh, tear into the uh, golf ball control unit so you can see how that works. So here's the back of the machine, and you know, not, nothing really is too special, but what is kind of cool is the bottom door. There's a lock here, and if you open it up, this is where you feed in more golf balls to refill the machine. And then there's another lock here. If you open this up, that removes the door so you can get into the, uh, uh, the actual unit which dispenses the golf balls. Like I said, when I bought the machine, the owners did not have the key to this back door. They only have two keys which fit down here. So. I uh, wasn't able to get into it until I got home and I fortunately have a bucket of keys that I bought somewhere and uh, I started going through all the keys just on the hopes that I'd be able to find a key that would work. If I couldn't there were a couple other options I could either drill the lock out which I really didn't want to do or uh, take it to a locksmith I know that has had some success in picking those locks, but it takes him a long time. He's not the fastest guy in the world. It might be a month or two months before I get it back. To make a long story short, I went through all my keys. On the very last key, it opened up the back door. I was thoroughly amazed. And I mean, it fit, it fit perfect. So I opened it up. And this is what I saw, and uh, you know, just a pristine original machine. Uh, the serial number, which I referred to before, was 419601. That's right on the side of the machine. And it's clear this machine hasn't been jacked around with at all. It's all original. Um, just
just uh, just the way you want to find them. So let's uh, open up the back door, pull out the Harbor Patrol unit, and see how that works. So here is the unit from the Mills Golf Ball Vendor, which actually dispenses the golf balls. And it's very, very simple, actually. There's a, uh, a six-prong, I believe it's called a Jones plug, that plugs in right here. And that goes up to the mechanism, which has blade switches that are hooked to the vertical fingers on the mechanism. And um, when it completes a circuit, this is the, the negative lead from the power supply. So that goes, that's connected to this plug here. And the blade switches up on the mechanism, when a winner is hit, it will complete the circuit to one of these other five plugs. The golf ball machine pays either one golf ball, three golf balls, five golf balls, seven, or twenty. So if one golf ball is the, is the winner, then the circuit is completed basically between this pin and this pin. And that will instruct the machine to pay off one golf ball. If it's three, the circuit's completed to this guy. Five is here, seven is here, and 20 is this top left one. And these connectors are hardwired to this little payout control, control unit here. So if we hook up a continuity tester, which I will show you in a second, we will see there is continuity from this plug here to this connector there. That's for one golf ball. Three goes to this third one. Five goes to the fifth one up. Seven goes up to the seventh one. Twenty, interestingly enough, goes to ten, and then all the the ones beyond 10 are all connected together in parallel and this little pointer here when it gets all the way to 20 golf balls it will open this blade which will open the circuit and kill the motor so what happens is so for example when one golf ball winner is hit the negative voltage gets connected to here which then goes to here and then this blade this big common copper blade here is connected to ground which then transfers the negative to ground which will then go to the motor and start the motor and that will keep the motor running until this wiper moves one position which will remove the, the uh, voltage and the motor will stop. So the motor is just a simple worm gear style motor which is hooked to a single gear which then has a little metal armature that spins around and every revolution moves the uh, ratchet one position. It also hits a lever here which I've disconnected which counts the number of golf balls, total number of golf balls that have been uh, paid out by the machine. I didn't want this counter to be uh, always being incremented while I was testing and all that, so I removed the counter. But the counter is very simple. It just goes right there, and this guy here goes onto the armature of the counter. So let's get a closer look at this and I'll actually put a continuity tester on there to show you what I mean about the continuity between these plugs and these connectors here. I just got a very simple continuity tester. So when we have continuity it will beep. I don't know if you can hear it or not but then the display will also go to zero or ten. Right now it's showing uh, infinity as far as the resistance. So for one payout we should see 
continuity to the one pin, which we do is beeping and nothing else. For three payout, we'll see to the three pin and nothing else. For five, we'll go up to five. One, two, three, four, five. There's beeping. For seven, and then for 20, it'll start up on around 10, I believe. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe it's 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that's 10. And then all of these are connected. So, since all of those are connected, you know, it, it, all the way up to that position, it should stop paying off right there, which would not be enough. And that's why they've, uh, it's actually, they're also connected down to here to keep the power going, and it'll keep going until that breaks the physical circuit to stop the motor. So it's very, very simple. Um, there was a well-known TV show that restored a Mills golf ball machine a few years ago, and they were documenting it, and they were talking about how incredibly complicated the payout mechanism was. And if this is incredibly complicated, then I guess they have never worked on a pinball machine or a bowling machine or anything, because this is ridiculously easy. Um, don't know what else I can say. Uh, the motor, it says six volts on it, but really, in order for it to run well enough, it looks like you need to run 12 volts. When I first bought this machine, it had batteries in it that were 50 years old. Amazingly, they hadn't leaked. These were the batteries that were in it. There were two of these. Uh, six volt lantern batteries. They were hooked up in series, so that means it was supplying 12 volts to the, uh, to the motor. Um, these have the screw tops, and these are almost impossible to find at your local stores anymore your Walmarts or Home Depots, and if you do find them, they're really expensive, but you can get them on the internet for about eight bucks a piece. So I've ordered a couple, I haven't got them in yet. So I've been testing this machine with some other batteries that I have, um, mainly for flying uh, radio controlled drones, just to, to verify everything. If the voltage is not sufficient, then you'll have a problem because when this worm gear is running as soon as this wiper advances off of the button the motor will stop well if the motor is not running at a pretty good clip it will stop at a point where the ratchet has not advanced far enough and if that happens when the machine goes to reset the ratchet, which it does do on every time you pull the handle by lifting this up to reset the ratchet, if the, if the arm is still connected to the motor which advances the ratchet, it will prevent that from winding back. So you've got to have enough voltage and enough amps driving the voltage to make that motor spin at a pretty good clip. So when the power is removed when this guy advances off of the hot lead. There's still enough um, force running with the motor uh, while it slows down to keep advancing the arm to get the ratchet into the proper position so it's not physically connected to the motor so it can release. This is the tube that feeds the golf balls and I will pull this off so you can see how it actually uh, holds the golf balls in place and then allows one to uh, exit one at a time 
it's extremely simple and um, then we'll also uh, show you some pictures from the top of the motor as it's running and um, let's do that we'll, we'll pull this off so you can see how the uh, mechanism prevents the golf balls from going out until this thing actually starts running and it allows one golf ball to dis be dispensed um, every time the uh, the gear wheel moves 360 degrees which also then ratches the, uh, the golf ball out mechanism I guess one position so um, I guess that's it uh, very straightforward electrical point of view very simple mechanism if you get one of these assuming it's not been corroded uh, beyond recognition it should be pretty easy to get working assuming your motor works um, if the whole thing is shot I don't think it'd be that hard to actually build a mechanism to make it work so here's the uh, payout mechanism with the golf ball tube removed and as you can see it's just a simple tube and it's got a cutout here and the golf balls just feed into the machine and there's this metal disc here and there's like a crescent moon cut out here and so when this thing is spinning clockwise when it gets up to the 11 o'clock position or so it actually kind of grabs a golf ball and then advances it down the tube but at the same time preventing the next golf ball from going down and um, here's the worm gear that's connected to the uh, regular gear so when this gear is spinning this gear is spinning around and then we've got this lever here which is connected to this uh, shaft that this gear is on and it will be spinning around and then it will be hitting notches on that gear there to advance it by one position and then you can see the ratchet at the bottom there right here which keeps it in place until the machine resets so as you can see as the machine's advancing the ratchet holds it in place until the, the handle is pulled and it resets so let me go ahead and hook up some power to this and we'll actually see everything running okay so I've got the battery hooked up I've got the uh, the negative voltage going into the Jones plug that corresponds to a seven golf ball payout so when I apply finish applying the power we should see this motor uh, do seven complete revolutions and this ratchet will advance by seven positions and sure enough it uh, it did that and I don't know if you noticed or not but when the power was killed to the motor it still had enough um, energy in it uh, and the momentum to continue the advance so the ratchet is now free if we release it it will restart we'll do it one more time so you can see the ratchet running Now we'll get another shot with it, um, so you'll be able to see the, the arm spinning around and hitting the ratchet. Okay, so we'll run it again. Now the, uh, the camera is zoomed in on the worm gear and the gear, and then here's the arm that will spin around, which will hit the ratchet. So we'll go ahead and start it.
Okay, so I've now reinstalled the tube that holds the golf balls. And again, this tube, when it's in the machine mechanism, uh, you know, there's a big golf ball storage unit, I'll call it, which probably holds, I don't know, 70 or 80 golf balls. And all of those are on a big uh, track. And those feed will feed into this round tube but obviously we have that uh, the payout mechanism off of the uh, golf ball storage unit so this only has enough room to store one golf ball I've got it uh, the plug into the Jones uh, receptacle for a payout of one golf ball and so we'll go ahead and apply power and if everything works like it should a golf ball will come out of the other end And sure enough, it did. And so then we put the golf ball back in. You know, it's held in place by that disc. Let's go ahead and tell it to pay off again. And just for grins, let's um, set it to pay out three. And I will hold the golf balls hand to allow them to feed in. Oops, it didn't quite feed in fast enough. Let's try again. There we go. So, now you should know everything you ever want to know about how the mechanism works for a Mills golf ball. So here's the back of the Mills golf ball with the uh, golf ball holding unit removed and uh, it just slides right in and is held on by these two pieces of wood. Here's the, I believe it's called a Jones connector, which goes from the bottom of the machine all the way to the top to these uh, six blades. And then this connector here is uh, is raised every time you pull the handle that will reset the, uh, the golf ball counter unit to, uh, to zero and I'll now uh, show you the, uh, the blades at the top of the mechanism sorry I didn't show them before so there's six blades here and the machine only pays off on five uh, five variations one golf ball three golf balls five golf ball seven and 20 but there are six blades so it looks like this machine could be configured to uh, not pay off on a cherry cherry random and only pay off on cherry cherry lemon or cherry cherry bell or to pay off on both and the way this particular machine is configured it's designed to pay off on both. So we've got this set of blades here, which gets activated when this vertical finger only goes in far enough for cherry, cherry, uh, anything but a bell or a lemon. If it's a bell or a lemon, bell or a lemon, it will advance further and activate this blade. Well, these two blades are connected in parallel so if either one of them are active, the, uh, the circuit to the one golf ball payout uh, lead is activated. But if we took off this wire here, then it would only pay off on cherry, cherry, lemon, or cherry, cherry, bell. The uh, second blade gets activated when the second vertical finger advances all the way and that is for the um, three coin or the three golf ball payout for three oranges. Five golf balls is for when three uh, plums get activated which is this third blade. The next blade is for three bells which is seven golf balls 
and then the jackpot of three bars, this blade gets closed when the last vertical finger is allowed to go through the holes, the three holes that represent the three bars. So if you're familiar with how a traditional slot machine works, uh, with the vertical payouts, it should be very obvious on, uh, on how this works. Uh, this machine also has a counter and it gets cycled every time the machine is played. And this machine has been played right now. The counter shows 7,429 pulls. So um, you divide that by four. That's just under uh, $2,000 this machine has taken in. So that is how the, uh, the mechanism works. Here's a plug here that plugs into the side of the case and that is connected to the, that's for these wires here, which go down to the hopper control unit or the golf ball payout unit. If we go to the front of the machine, You can see here's the payout card, two cherries and anything pays one, two cherries and a uh, bell pays one, lemon pays one, and then the orange combination pays three, plums pays five, bells pay seven, and uh, three bars pays 20. So obviously they probably made different award cards to maybe get rid of the, uh, the two cherry payout. And if they did that, all they have to do is remove that one wire from that one clip to um, make the machine a little more tighter. 